What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a little bit of a look at... Well, we're still going to be talking about Lord Nightmon. And Lord Nightmon is still the best deck in the Digimon TCG. We talked about this the other day. Yellow is absolutely crushing still. And the main reason for that is still Lord Nightmon. But I want to show you a very different Lord Nightmon list today. One that also plays around pretty heavily with the Yellow War Greymon. Now, I should mention that this was tweeted out. This was won in a, a local tournament over in Japan by JewelGuard underscore one. That is where the list originates from. And if we start off having a little bit of a look at the digit armor, we have what we end up having so often here, which is a 4-1 split. Because you are allowed five in total, but you're only allowed four of any single digit armor. And the four here just so happens to be Pikmon. When you attack... If you have three or more Digimon, one of your opponent's Digimon loses 1,000 power for the turn. And we see this in yellow all the time. This is like the special skill of yellow. The ability to lower power as you go and delete Digimon without actually having to attack. It's not the last time we're going to see that in this particular deck. The one off here is the Coromon that came around in BT4. When you are attacking once during your turn... If you have three or fewer security cards, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 1,000 for the turn. So it's the same kind of effect as Pikmon, but essentially these yellow decks like this, they feel more confident having three or more Digimon in play than having three or fewer security cards. So you're still going to be trying to lower power. That's the only thing your Digitama are doing but you're trying to go for the most likely way that that's going to happen. Now, moving over into level 3s here, there are a bunch of Digimon that we've come to expect from yellow decks here, including Starmons. Starmons is great. Like, proper job, arguably slightly too good for a level 3. And Starmon comes in with a lovely skill here when you play it, one of your opponent's Digimon loses a thousand power for the turn for each Digimon that you have in play. So if you can get a whole bunch of Digimon out and then play this, you can be deleting Digimon by playing a free cost level three. That's a little bit over the top ridiculously good. The other one here that gets graced with a full playset is Pulsemon. And I love me some Pulsemon. That might make me start playing yellow a lot more in the near future. But Pulsemon's got a fairly ridiculous skill, whereby when you play it, if you've got three or more security cards, you draw one. If you've got three or less, you gain a memory. It basically turns into a two-cost to play. But do bear in mind that if you've got exactly three, it's a two-cost to play that will draw you a card, which is, I mean, that's clearly a little bit over-the-top good, right? It gets a little bit silly good a little bit quickly. Now, those are the play sets we have, but we do have a few others coming in as well. We've got the Salomon that came around in the starter deck here. Just a couple of those, because it's a two-cost to play normally. No other real reason, nothing else terribly special about it. The reason we're playing this very simply is it is a two-cost to play normally, and that is cheap to get into play. We also do have another Salomon coming in here. It's one we see a fair bit of. It's the one from BT2, and when it's deleted, if your security is free or less, you get to recover one. If your security is more than free, you don't, but it's going to work often enough that this sees a fairly gigantic amount of play. This is something we see pretty often in yellow decks, honestly. It's, it's a pretty gosh darn good card, to put it bluntly. Now, we do also see a couple of copies here of Bushy Agamon, and Bushy Agamon's awesome, because, yeah, it's a five cost to play normally, but it's got Rush, and that means you can attack a bit the turn you play it, and Rush swings games. Rush basically says, oh, you were expecting me to only be able to attack three times and therefore not be able to win the game this turn. Yeah, I can actually attack four times and now I can win the game this turn. And that's a little bit upsetting for your opponent. Although probably kind of good for you. And then we just have one copy there of Kotamon. Kotamon comes in with a lovely skill. When you play it, you reveal five cards on the top of your deck. And you add up to two yellow Digimon with either Warrior or Holy Warrior in their types to your hand. 
And that is the kind of thing we're going to be playing here, a bunch of these warrior Digimon. So having a copy of this to help you to search them out seems like a pretty good thing. Now moving over into level 4s, we do see a fair bit of what we would generally expect. Least of which, and this is pretty much a 4 of in every yellow deck unless you've got a really good reason. Otherwise, Pidamon. It's a one cost to Digivolve blocker. And sure, you have to give up a couple of memory when you attack, but you, you don't attack with Pidamon. It's a one cost to Digivolve blocker. It's too gosh darn good. Now, along similar lines here, we also see that we are playing a couple copies of Turimon, which I've pronounced terribly. Three copies, in fact, because I'd say one cost to Digivolve. Now, it's not got blocker like Pidamon, which is a little bit sad. But it's a one cost to Ninja Evolve. It gets you up to your higher levels a little bit more quickly. And this is something that you absolutely want to be playing around with. Again, this is pretty much a staple in yellow decks. You've got to have a pretty good reason not to be playing it. And most yellow decks, frankly, don't have a good reason. We've then got a couple of copies of Unimon, which is a two cost to Ninja Evolve, but it is a blocker. And that'll do, pig. That'll do. It just gives you access to more blockers. It means you've got six blockers in your deck rather than four that you might have otherwise. And that honestly makes all of the difference. So we've got a bunch to Digivolve up a little bit more easily. And we've also got a bunch of blockers. That seems like a good mix to have in terms of yellow for Digimon. But we do also have a couple copies of Gladimon. When you play it, you look at your security stack. You may reveal a Digimon with Warrior or Holy Warrior in its type and add it to your hand. And then if you do, recover one. But remember, recovery here isn't real recovery. All you're actually doing is just replacing the card you literally just picked up. So you're not really getting any further away from losing. But you are searching your security, grabbing a card, and then replacing it so you're not getting any closer to losing. Yeah. Like I said a minute ago, we're searching out. We're trying to get rolling. This, this seems like a pretty good one to me. Moving over here into the level fives, we see another Digimon that we are absolutely expecting to see in this deck because it's that kind of deck. It's Nightmon. When you play it, one of your opponent's Digimon loses 4,000 power for the turn. I told you we'd have plenty more losing power skills as we went. And yes, this is a 7 cost to play normally, which is moderately expensive. But when we get to Lord Nightmon, we'll remember that actually we ain't going to be paying 7 cost to play it a lot. So we're absolutely fine. We also here see three copies of War Growlmon. This is the one that's got a rather lovely skill, Digiverse 2. Trash 2 evolution cards, or Digivolution cards. And one of your opponent's Digimon loses 4,000 power for the turn. So again, it's just another way to start losing power. And what you're trying to do here, occasionally you're going to be breaking the power tie, bringing a Digimon low enough that you can delete it with one of yours while surviving. But a lot of the time, what you're going to be doing here is taking out your opponent's Digimon without even needing to bother with that whole attacking malarkey. Which honestly sounds pretty gosh darn good to me. We then have just a couple copies of the Angel Woman from BT3. When you Digivolve, one of your opponent's Digimon gets security attack minus two. Which is kind of awesome. Hopefully stops them taking out security. But more importantly, when you're attacking, if you have three or fewer security cards, you may play a yellow level three Digimon from your hand without paying for it. And you can go for any of them here. But obviously the one I'm thinking is Bushy Agamon. So you can play it for free while having Rush and being able to attack again this turn. Sure, you can play Pulse Mod and depending on the turn, you might gain a memory and draw a card without paying any memory. Which is clearly awesome. But a lot of the time what you're really going to be gunning for here is a way to play Bushy Agamon for free. And then be able to attack with it again. And like I said earlier, if you can get extra attacks that your opponent wasn't expecting, that is a surefire way to win pretty quickly. Now moving over into level 6s, we do just have one tiny little... Well, well one just little tech of Slash Angemon. And Slash Angemon is cool, right? When you Digivolve into it, one of your opponent's Digimon loses 8,000 power for the turn. 
You're probably going to want to Digivolve it up into your level 7, because it's got 8,000 power and it's kind of trash. But that Digivolution skill, especially in a deck which is trying to lower power, is pretty gosh darn awesome. Now, at the end of the day, this is a Lord Nightmon deck. I warned you this was a Lord Nightmon deck. And it is a Lord Nightmon deck. And basically what we've got here is when you attack, you may play either a yellow level 3 Digimon or a yellow Digimon card with Warrior in its type from your hand without paying its memory cost. So you can play another Lord Nightmon for free. Or you can play Nightmon, you know, the one with that really good skill, for free. Or you can play that Bushy Agamon that's got Rush for free. And bearing in mind with Angel Woman as well, that does give you multiple options for playing these cards for free, or at least your level 3s, which, again, it's kind of ridiculous, right? You've already got this really good deck with all these really good skills. Now you're able to start playing a load of these Digimon for free at the same time. It starts feeling a little bit unfair. It, it's why this is the best deck around. And then there is also then another skill whereby for each Digimon you have in play, you gain a thousand power. So it's not good enough that you're playing all these Digimon for free when you attack, but you're also going to end up with really high power. So you're not going to be deleted when you attack, which means you're going to then be able to play more Digimon for free. It gets a little bit silly. But what's really different about this particular deck is comboing it with War Greymon. Now, War Greymon is not one of these warrior, holy warrior types, so it doesn't fit in being played with Lord Nightmon. But when you're attacking once during your turn, you may add the top card of your security sack to your hand to unsuspend this Digimon and give one of your opponent's Digimon minus 6,000 for the turn. And as much as it doesn't combo with Lord Nightmon in terms of Lord Nightmon can't play it for free, it absolutely does combo because you're lowering power as you go. And you're unsuspending so you get extra attacks, which of course you can then combine with Bushy Agamon's Rush, which gives you extra attacks. And what you essentially end up with here is this crazy deck where you are taking out a bunch of your opponent's Digimon without attacking. And you are also getting extra attacks. And I love this build of Lord Nightmon. I think this is absolutely brilliant. Obviously, there are going to be times you cannot afford to add a security card to your hand. And actually, not for nothing, that is extra draw power as you do it. But there are going to be times when you can. And this is going to give you a huge leg up. Now, in terms of level 7 tier, we are playing a level 7, just the one, and just a couple copies of it, but it works very nicely in the deck. We are talking about Chaos Mon Valderam, and for what it's worth, this is the only level 7 that can Digivolve from yellow, so if you are playing a level 7 in a yellow deck, it has definitely got to be this one. But what we've got here is when you Digivolve, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 7,000 power, except you do that twice, which means you can either lower 1 by 14,000 or 2 by 7,000 each. Either way, that sounds pretty gosh darn good to me. And again, it just fits in beautifully with the rest of the deck. And it means you Digivolve up into Slash Angemon, you get that skill, but then it's kind of sitting there being a bit rubbish. So then you Digivolve it again into Chaos Mon Valderam, and then you've had minus 8, minus 7, minus 7, and now you've got a 14,000 threat on the field rather than an 8,000 weakling. Oh yeah, and when it's deleted, you gain free memory, which is kind of cool. Nice little handy bonus. Not the reason we play it, but a nice handy bonus nonetheless. Now, in terms of Tamer cards here, we are actually playing a Tamer, and it is the TK Takaishi that came around in BT1. It's one of those Tamers that guarantees you start your turn with free memory, which is nice. But when you play it, you look at your security, you may reveal a card and add it to your hand, and if it's yellow, you recover one. You're playing an entirely yellow deck, so it, you will be able to grab a card. Again, it's not real recovery. All you're doing is replacing a card you picked up. But that's absolutely fine. You are searching in your security. You are being, well, more consistent. And because if this comes out as a security, you play it for free, you really want this as a security card because this is going to give you super cheeky extra consistency. 
We've then got one option card coming in as well, and it's one we see a fair amount, and it's one where you are not going to be paying any memory whatsoever. It's Blinding Ray. Now, Blinding Ray is a weird one. You have to trash the top card of your security stack, which is not ideal, but then you gain two memory. So, very much like War Greymon here, this isn't something you're just going to blindly do the second you draw into the card. You need to have a think about it, you need to time it properly, etc. But there are going to be turns where it is absolutely worth it, and you are good to go. I like this deck. I know it's Lord Nightmon, and I know that Lord Nightmon is very much the best deck around at the moment. But I think comboing it with War Greymon gives it a different flavour and makes it a bit more fun. Plus, you've got four copies of Pulse Mon, and who am I to argue? But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you think about all of this. I want to know if you think this deck is as good as it looks. So let me know in the comment section, would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.